YouTube. This is Felicia with the Bible Scraps and happy fall, y'all, though it's low 90s in my neck of the woods. I am waiting for the fall weather to return, but right now we are in the 90s for the next week, but it feels good. But I am in the fall spirit and that's all that matters, right? It may not look like fall in my neck of the woods, but as you can see, I have brought fall into my home and to my craft room. I am manufacturing fall. <laughs> you see my little fall ambiance, my little fall setup. I got a light up tree, which I'll have this linked below for any of you who are interested and you want to bring fall into your home. I have a fall pumpkin candle burning. I have a dish here. Um, I got from Dollar Tree last year. They came in different colors, nice and sturdy. I have a fall tea in my fall cup. Yes, I got the fall ambiance on, y'all. <laughs> and because it's fall, it is harvest time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a garden. Now, my summer garden did not do well, so I'm not going to like have a huge harvest from my summer crops, but I am expecting a harvest for what I've sold already. Yeah, if you don't know, fall is the time to not only harvest pumpkins, but different types of greens, lettuces, carrots and beets and radishes and, and sweet potatoes, uh -huh, pomegranates, yeah. Now, here's the thing. You don't need a garden to reap. Did you guys read this scripture here? Found Galatians 6 and 7. By the way, this is a craft functional video. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. This principle not only applies to the garden, but you, once again, don't need to have a garden to sow and reap. The question is, what have you been sowing? What are you reaping? Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. <laughs> we are going to be talking about this scripture in this video because once again, it's harvest time, right? It's time to reap. It's time to harvest the things that we have sold. Now, I will have this these dyes linked below. When I saw these several weeks ago, I knew I had to immediately get them. They're by a designer. Her name is Tara Smith, and it's all about pies. And you can use these dyes all year long. Um, fall is not only about reaping and sowing, but it's also or about reaping rather and sewing because I've been sewing too, but it's about baking, right? It's about making stews and soups. But anyway, in this video, we will be using this die set, which is called Dish It Up and Serve a Slice. You guys can probably see some of my pie slices on my desk. Now, real soon, I will be using, if Lord willing, Sky View Pies. And then perfect pies. And then there are some coordinate items I need to pick up. I wish I would have picked up the pie sentiment set. But I'll go back and pick that up. Right now, I believe these items are on sale. So once again, do check out my description box for the links below. Okay, let me have a sip of this. I'm loving this vanilla caffeine-free tea. Mmm with two pumpkin spice creamers and honey. You guys, it is the bomb. All right, some examples. I do have a card to share and I do have a tag to share, but I'm not gonna share it right now. But take a look at some of my, mm, my pie slices. I love it. I did something different by using glittered paper and specialty type papers, and I believe because I did want a realistic pie look, and I believe I achieved that. The thing about baking pies and using food coloring, you can you can make any color pie you like. And I'm loving the mirror cardstock. This mirror cardstock is by Anna Griffin. I think it's called Gold's, Rose Gold. I'm not sure if it's still available. And then I used glitter papers. 
that I got from my stash by Die Cuts with the View. Now, this one was supposed to be a buttermilk pie slice, but it looks like a cheesecake. So it could be either one. And this one has, um, what do you call this? Puffy. Um, I'll share that with you all. Actually, I'll use it in the video. And this one is just plain whipped cream. But I love how these turned out. Now, this one has more of a Halloween feel. I don't do bloody. I don't do the, um, you know, the bones and the skeletons and all that. I like creepy cute. This right here, I could see something like this being served at a Halloween party, right? You got your swirl pie. And I love the color of the, the plate and the fork. And then check out the orange whipped cream because you can make whipped cream in any color. And then here's a slice here. Love that glittered crust. And this one, I'm not too done with it. For most of these, I did not do any coloring. I did color this one. And the fact that I did not do any coloring made creating these cuts quick and easy. Now, this one is, some of you might say pumpkin pie, but it's actually sweet potato pie. And we will be putting together a slice of sweet potato pie. But let's get back to this scripture, you guys. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. I love that when the scripture just talks so frankly and so direct and upfront. Don't be deceived. Don't be confused either. God will not be mocked. People, we are going to reap what we sow, good or bad. And here's the thing. I believe the scripture is, is stressing God is not mocked because sometimes we just get away, right, with sowing all manner of bad things all the year long and we continue to do it and do it and do it. And we do it so much we think that we'll never be punished for it which is why the writer is stressing God is not mocked. You will reap what you sow. It may not come in the season that some might think it should come. Like right now, it's harvest season. There are certain crops that we harvest during this season. But you know what? You never know when you are going to reap what you sow. You don't know what season. And it can come upon you and like make no sense. It can come out of nowhere. But God is not mocked, people. We will reap what we sow. What are you sowing? What are you reaping? It can take 10, 15, 20, 30 years before you start to reap what you sow. And you will reap it in this life and in the next. Check out this next scripture and then we'll get into right? Putting together this pumpkin pie right here. All the pieces are right here. Galatians 6 and 8 goes on to state, for he that soweth to his flesh or her flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he or her that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting, eternal life. Let's start to put this together and then let's talk about right? How we can sow unto the spirit and sow unto the flesh. Because whether or not you know it, we're sowing either to the spirit or sowing either, either to the flesh. And we are going to reap accordingly. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and put these pieces together. I have been doing a lot of die cutting. And if I didn't mention... The designer is Tara Smith. She has a YouTube channel and I watched a couple of her videos assembling these pieces and you could see the glitter crust here. This is the plate. These two pieces make the pie and this piece is the whipped cream. And there's other pieces that I didn't use. I love it how you can customize these pie slices to different types of pies. But let's get into this word, right? What does it mean? How do you sow to the flesh? Well, let's pull up a scripture. Works of the flesh found in Galatians 5 and 19. And I have a King James version and an amplified version. 
I'm going to read, uh, let's read the amplified version. This is sowing unto the flesh, which is your, your, your desires, you know, your sinful passions, mine too. When I say your, I'm talking about all of us because we all have this in us. Galatians 5, 19 through 21, amplified version reads, now the practices of the sinful nature are clearly evident. They are sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, total ir irresponsibility, lack of self-control, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions that promote heresies, envy, drunkenness, riotous behavior, and other things like these. I warn you beforehand, just as I did previously, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. These are some of the examples, not all of them, but these are examples of behaviors and actions that sow unto the flesh. It behooves all of us to go through this list and highlight, right? Highlight the ones we are guilty of. Now, many of us, we may not, let's see, hmm, we may not participate in sorcery or witchcraft, but do you have the spirit of jealousy upon you, enviness, fits of anger, right? Do you drink? Do you get high? Do you get drunk? All of those things are examples, they're behaviors of sowing unto the flesh. And if you sow unto the flesh, people, you will reap a harvest. And it talks about a harvest of, where is it? Back to this scripture here, reap corruption. And not just corruption in the next life, which is hell, living apart from God, but corruption in this life as well. Let's talk about that as I put these together. Drink some more tea. Mm. This tea is so good. You know, when you, when we, any of us, when we engage in behaviors that are illegal, immoral, that are sinful, it puts us at risk for many different things, right? Going to jail, losing our families, going into debt, divorce, separation, death. If you're messing with a married, a married person, how many times have you heard situations like that can lead to the death of people? So we reap in this life and in the next life. Now, what you guys probably didn't see, there is a ore line there that aids where to put both pieces. And this is my pie right here, you all. Now, the papers I use, I'm going to share them, but they're discontinued. Look through your stash for what you have. And you could also color, color your own paper get white paper and color any color you like i did not do any coloring except for this one here i just used my papers and i am being more organized so i created a file folder and i'll probably have a couple more and i just i have different colors of fall papers here i got some oh i have a larger I got 12 inch papers too, more of my specialty papers. But you see here, this is the one I'll be using in the video. This came from a yesteryear die cuts with the view paper pad. I went through and purged a lot of papers some years ago and I wish I would have kept the whole pad, but I took out the browns because brown is my favorite color. And, um, I donated the other colors and now I'm just kicking myself because I love this paper because it's glitter, but it's the kind of glitter that's embedded in the paper. So you don't have glitter, glitter everywhere. But this other paper here, 
Ouch. This one here is a mirror card stock, and this is by Anna Griffin, and I believe it's called Rose Gold. I've had it for several years. She might still offer this. I hope she do, because I would love to pick up more, because it has a brown tone to it. Now, to add the pie crust, I'm just going to add glue here. I'm going to let it sit for a second just so it can get a little bit um, a little bit hard because it's kind of watery. And let's get back to this scripture, you all, because this is a craft devotional video. Let's talk about sowing to the Spirit, right? The promise is if we sow unto the Spirit, we'll reap eternal life. And that should be all of our goal because this natural life, it's going to end people it will cease to exist. Where will you spend eternity? Because yes, you will live forever, either with or without God. I'm just going to add that. Okay, what I should have did, got to pay attention, Felicia. I'm going to take that off and yes, rub the glue off my fingers because what I want to do is add the glue to the bottom part here. But how do we sow unto the spirit? Doing the opposite of sowing unto the flesh. We sow to the spirit by obeying God's word and not doing those things that's in opposition to his word that gratifies our sinful nature fornication, adultery, the forbidden fruit, lying and gossiping and being greedy. All those things bring a false sense of satisfaction to this flesh. But they lead to eternal damnation. And once again, consequences in this life. But when we obey God, when we pray, right? When you pray, you are sowing to the spirit, that's if you're praying to God and not idolatry because idolatry is one of those things that um, the last scripture I talked about, that's sowing, that's so idolatry, that's sowing unto the flesh. You can't be worshiping the stars and the moon and all that and expect to inherit the kingdom of God. But we sow unto the spirit Praying, fasting, reading our word, doing activities that helps us think about God. But also, when you forgive, you're sowing unto the Spirit. When you repent, when you confess, you are sowing unto the Spirit. There's, well, I'm doing a series. And it's going to take me longer than I supposed, <laughs> than I intended to finish it. But... You know, I think I want to add, do I want to pop this up here? Let's pop this one up. I'm doing the Fruits of the Spirit series. And let me go ahead and read it for you all, if I can. Galatians 5 and 22 states, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. When we incorporate the fruits of the Spirit in our works, in our behaviors and actions, we are sowing unto the Spirit. When we practice the things that I've mentioned, and I'm going to use these journey foam squares, these might, yeah, these are still available. When we practice loving, practicing love, and giving, and confessing, and repenting, and helping. When we incorporate gentleness, self-control, right, in our actions, the when we sow unto the flesh, we really lack self-control, but we can ask God for that to help us and give us self-control, to give us temperance. I love these dots. They come off the sheet so easy. And then you could peel off the liner 
just as easy as well. So let's pop this up. This is looking so cute already. Ah! And then the last thing to do, or one of the last things to do, is to add our, our icing. I could leave that plain, but I want to add some icing. But it's simple, you all. We sow unto the Spirit by obeying God, by practicing godly behaviors, by not lying, by not stealing, by not cheating, by not being greedy, by not gossiping, by by not acting or you know being vengeful or or jealous. It is normal and human to make mistakes. It is normal and human because we're flesh. You know, we are, we're going to fall short. But thanks be, and I'm going to open this up. Thanks be to God, people. We can, we can make it right by confessing, by repenting, by turning away from the acts of the flesh. And that's how we sow to the spirit. And the promise is we shall reap eternal life. But we shall also be blessed in this life. Once again, God is not mocked. You shall reap what you sow. If you sow love, you are going to reap love. The concept is true just as true as the, the physical seeds that we sow in the ground. If you sow an apple seed, you're going to get an apple tree. If you sow collard greens, you're going to get collard greens. We, If we sow good, we are going to reap good. We may not know what season we're going to reap it, but once again, God is not mocked. We shall reap what we sow. All right. I am using a snow marker pen that you could pick up at Hobby Lobby. <laughs> I pick up these every year. Actually, this one here, I picked up last season. I still have some extra ones because I like to use these all year long. And when I go back to Hobby Lobby, uh-oh, I'm going to pick up more. The thing about using these and you see what happens, you do have to be gentle. You do have to learn how to use it. I'm okay with this big old... The lob that came out because it's going to fill up my, my whipped cream there. Now, you can let it sit and dry. I've done that before. It takes a minute. But if you grab your heat gun, you can see the magic happens instantly. I was looking at this and I'm like, do this look like whipped cream or cottage cheese? <laughs> so, and you don't have to add a pop dot, but, and I'm going to bring back out my heat gun. If you do make a mistake, the more heat applied, the puffier it gets. And if you make a mistake like I just did, just take your heat gun back out and puff it up more. And look, you guys, we have a beautiful slice of sweet potato pie. I love that. Look at that. The last ah. thing to do is to add the fork because you got to have a fork, right? But then again, if you're like me and you guys, we have been eating sweet potato pie the last couple weeks. I have yet to buy Costco's pumpkin pie every year. I, I do buy those, but let me tell you, Costco's pumpkin pie got nothing on Patty LaBelle's sweet potato pie that you can pick up at Walmart. And they have the family size available too. 
<laughs> so um, I don't have any in the fridge. I had I, well, I gave my dogs the leftovers several days ago because I put the pie in the refrigerator, and it if it's in there too long, it can start to like gum up. So I gave it to the dogs and and they loved it, but. The next time I go to Walmart, which may be today, because Walmart is one of the few stores that has the pumpkin spice creamer and the individual little thingies, I need to pick up more. And so I'll pick up another pumpkin pie. But this is so fitting because we've been eating a lot of pumpkin pie and with whipped cream. And look how, just look how beautiful that is. Mm, I'm going to have these throughout my journal, and I'll give you guys a sneak peek. I got it started. I got started, rather, creating the cover of my journal, and I have already did two pages. They're not totally finished, but anyway, I'm not letting the fact that my journal is not bound yet stop me from journaling, but I love how this cover turned out this is fabric here and I have a boatload of this it's like a upholstery fabric but I love how this turned out thus far I'm going to have these pie die cuts throughout my entire journal because <laughs> been eating so so much um so much pie okay let me share with you all as I close out this devotional I do have a a card and I have I have a tag to share but let's reflect once again on the scripture. You know what? Let me give a couple examples of how we reap and sow. Some of us are reaping things good or bad, and we don't realize it. A lot of what we go through in this life is because of cause and effect. Something we did or something we did not do. We like to think or blame God for a lot of what happens to us. But a lot of it's just natural cause and effect. You reap what you sow. One example is if, if you want to be married, but you're sowing promiscuity, you're not going to reap a marriage. But what you will possibly reap is heartache, heartbreak, pregnancy, unwanted pregnancy, disease, even death. We don't always reap exactly the thing that we sow. That don't that may not always happen, but there's definitely just like if you I don't know, uh was it last year I sowed um I sowed lettuce and a tomato, a tomato seed was in my lettuce packet and a tomato grew. I shared a video. It grew throughout fall and winter, y'all. Tomato plants grow during the summer. But that, that plant thrived. I guess the point I'm trying to make is you might sow something and you could possibly get other things that comes with the reaping. Because when it's time to reap, some might say it's not fair, it's not just. Just like if we give and the Bible talks about you give, you'll get it back a hundredfold, two hundredfolds. We don't know what that translate to. When you reap, you don't know what the, or when you sow, you don't know what type of harvest you are going to get back because God is a God of judgment. He will not be mocked. We shall reap. And who wants to reap though? Hell. I know I don't want to reap hell, but we got to think spiritually minded. Climate change. With the earth getting warm, that's a result of the earth reaping what has been sowed. We have been sowing bad, you know, um, uh, the, the, the gas and burning the oil and doing that for years and decades. Now the earth is reaping because of what man has sowed. And now we're reaping bad air quality. California has like the worst air quality. We're reaping asthma and respiratory issues that, that can lead to a premature death. So even the earth reaps what man sows. I have a challenge as I share 
this tag with you all. Look at this tag, you guys. Okay, because Halloween is this month. It is October. <laughs> and before you know it, Halloween will be here. And I think this is so stinking cute. I have a piece of Halloween pie with a dark glittered um, paper as a plate and a fork. And then I have this sentiment eat drink and be scary and i have this cute jack-o-lantern and i'm sure we all have access to halloween stickers but i'll share with you the sheet that i pulled that sticker from it comes from a yesteryear sheet by my favorite scrapbooking it's a bygone company brand cookbooking i love these stickers so i pulled this one here and you can, if you can tell that I've popped up the pie. And then, you guys, this ribbon here, I'm a Costco fanatic. I will probably never share how many rolls I have of Costco and Sam's Club ribbon. This is the latest one I picked up. It took my store a while to get this particular print in. You know, at Costco... They have examples of the different ribbons, and they they had this one in the example. But every time I went, I didn't find this one. So I finally went to Costco last week, and it, it was probably only at, because I shop at two. We have three Costcos. I normally shop at two. Probably just the one store had it, but this is a gorgeous ribbon, you all. I want to use this when I make my, my wreath. Look. At the glorious colors this is so beautiful well I used a piece of it to add to this tag oh and this this tag you guys comes from I used a die set by scrap diva I love this cutting board collection and I got to check her website to see because she has a new cutting board die set too it's a round one I want to pick up that one but I I love this die set here and that's that's what i used and this came out simple but to me it's satisfying now here's my challenge and then i'll share my card i want you all to be mindful of what you sow and who you sow unto if you sow unto the spirit or the flesh be mindful of that today and every day be intentional about sowing unto the spirit Take a mental note. Stop. Thank God. You know, journal and record it. Because we ought to be sowing unto the Spirit. We ought to be expecting a harvest, you all. No matter what season it is, we are going to harvest. You don't want to harvest corruption. But you will if you're not sowing unto the Spirit. So be mindful. Take the challenge and be mindful of it. If you sow unto the Spirit, there's going to be an immeasurable harvest. And that's what I'm looking forward to. As I close out with this beautiful card. Ah, it's something different. <laughs> this paper is a specialty paper. It came from Tuesday morning over 10 years ago and the same same sheet pack so i have plenty of that i'm loving the color so appropriate for fall this is once again a sweet potato slice and look it says baked with love and i'll share what i used here i used a tim holtz this cut and emboss set here and then you can probably barely see it says sweet potato Sweet potatoes, pie. <laughs> okay, I had to put that sentiment together. And I used, and I'm so happy to have this because it's so, I love to cook and bake and do all that in the kitchen. And it's so hard to find companies that, that cares about baking and all that. This comes from a yesteryear company called Clear and Simple Stamps. And you guys, I love it. Take a look at all of the different um, crops, fruits, including sweet potatoes. Probably not going to find a sentiment or sweet potato stamp in any collection by any brand. It's so hard to find. And then there's different fonts too. 
with each one. So I used that, and then I used a pie stamp, and I probably, I think I put that one away from another company, and that set is no longer available. So I had to go through my stash and piece together my sentiment, but I love how this turned out. What I'm gonna do, more than likely, is take off. I just want the card front to add to my journal. I don't wanna make this into a card. Oh, and then up here, I used, um, what do you call this? Sequin ribbon? I got this from Create and Craft years ago. And I, I love how this turned out. All right, you guys, I will have these pies and anything else linked below. If you like this video, why not like it? Give me a big thumbs up. Why not subscribe? Why not um, leave a comment? Why not hit that notification bell? Why not leave a comment and let me know your thoughts on sowing and reaping? Why not share this video? <laughs> all right, you all. I'm loving my fall ambiance. This candle smells so good. This is a thrifted candle, but I'm going to be on the hunt for another pumpkin shaped candle i'm going to go ahead and blow this out and then cover it look how pretty that is this is gorgeous i love this oh and i'll have the tree linked below as well all right you all i want to thank you all for watching as always blessings